because they speak Greek in their colleges as good as the Greeks in the Lyceum University in Athens. This alphabet is preserved in Wales. Now, the reason for it, be, it's British. Let's, it, Welsh history is British history. It belongs to all of us. The one part of Britain that wasn't really overrun at some time in the centuries and sometime destroyed by Irish people in North Wales or others flooding in was South East Wales. Okay. Immensely poor. Glamorgan. Glamorgan, Gwent, bits of Brecon and parts mm -hmm. maybe the Red Cantref, Gloucester to the west of the Severn. A largest place called Esalug. The Romans called Esalug Silures, they called them. It means abounding in prospects. That's where the alphabet and the ciphers were preserved. Now, the preservation of them is, is extremely valuable. We found uh, a person writing in 1897, a publication in 1848 from Oxford, a publication in 1852, yeah, and a publication in 1906 saying, isn't it strange the Welsh British ancient alphabet is identical, or near identical, to the old Etruscan alphabet? and the Pelasgian alphabet of the Aegean and Turkey. Okay. Now we've got an alphabet going back in that way. Now going, going, we've got an alphabet going east, haven't we? Going east, well, or I from would the think east. it came from the east, okay. right? This starts you thinking because the name of the ten tribes of Israel, as recorded by the Assyrians, was the Cymri. K-H-U-M-R-Y. Which sounds very familiar to me because it's on all those cars that drive across the Severn Bridge, right. isn't it? Well, they, <laughs> the word they've, Cymru. since about 1900, they've dropped the K-H and replaced it with a hard C, but the correct spelling up until 1900 was K-H-U-M-R-Y. That's the ten tribes of Israel. They're on Egyptian things. Now, when Austin Layard... I've got to stop you there. Go on. Because this, this, on. Is, this is good. So, are you saying, then, that the early Brits were in fact the ten tribes of yeah, Israel. Yeah, I'm going to prove, prove it. Well, they didn't get lost. They knew where they were. Nobody else did. <laughs> <laughs> they were hiding in Wales. That's right. Well, in, in the whole of Western Britain. The whole of Western probably Britain. Lancashire, okay. up, Cumbria, up to Strathclyde and so on. But the point is this. When Austin Laird dug up the archives of the Assyrian emperors at Nineveh, mm -hmm. and he did this in 1846, the first find was uh, 25,000 clay baked tablets, all their writings and archives and deal. Yes. Packed them all up, sent them to the London British Museum. I've seen them, I think. Uh, later, his Arab, uh, an Arab general, I think his name was Hormud, but he found another 5,000. When these tablets got to the British Museum, they were looking at them and so they suddenly, <laughs> wow, some of these have got the ancient British alphabet. <laughs> No, there's a coincidence. There's a coincidence. What are the chances but, of that? Well, wait a minute. You see, you've got the alphabet right through Turkey. The Assyrians now have it in correspondence probably sent to them. So we reason this. If the alphabet stretches back in that direction, how much further does it go? Now, Jim Michael in Kentucky was researching with us, and he's into the American inscriptions. We managed to get a picture in a magazine of a... Dead Sea Scrolls scholar examining sort of Dead Sea Scrolls stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, of all the and hundreds, the of, copper ones you're talking and about. Of all the of all the scrolls, all of them are on papyrus or whatever, but two are on copper. Yes. The two that's on copper are not in Aramaic, and they're not in the, the same alphabet. Different alphabet entirely, different they think language. Professor Carl McCarter said he was going to decide for me, never did, and he said. Uh, I don't know what the alphabet is, I don't know what the language is, but it's Hebrew. <laughs> you see? No, actually, that's inspired, because we thought, if these Cymri of the Assyrians, the ten tribes, are the Cymri of Wales, and that is the route they we're following back, you know, uh -huh. then it's highly likely that this could be Colburn. Of course... Which is the language, the Welsh the, the, language. The, the Welsh alphabet. Yeah, the Welsh alphabet. But so, it was abundantly clear. So I went out to America and I was with Jim White for a few weeks and he said, well, I, and I knew what he was going to do. I'm going somewhere Friday night. He said, oh, no. So Friday night we drove through all this rain and we got to a Baptist seminary, a big college, and they actually had got some photographs of the Copper Scrolls. Because the people who had got hold of these, a small group of scholars, had hogged them and nobody else could get at them. And it wasn't until Robert Eisenman, a 
distinguished scholar said, look, we've had 40 years of nonsense here. Everybody's entitled to see... Trying to decipher them. They haven't been able to decipher yeah, them. Believe me, the right mess. A fellow named Malik, a, a, a Polish priest, had got over to the copper scrolls, and it took, it took him 40 years, and he didn't get there. But Hold on, Polish priest. Malik. I think he needs to read this he one. He needs to read that one. I think he's dead now, so I'll have to send him one up there. Okay. But the point is that we managed to get this now we looked at it now the photographs are, uh, must have been taken in the middle of a thunderstorm on a dead dark night with a box brownie camera because you couldn't really see they, they deliberately didn't want you to see it but i just counted the number of letters you see there were 17 in that line and then his sort of version he was trying to twist them into aramaic letters and i'd say 14 because he joined two together and then another one you'd have 20 and he'd have 25 <laughs> And they, and they weren't Aramaic. But we managed to see some of it fairly clearly. In two and a half hours, we translated five lines, quite clearly, quite okay. definitely. Into Welsh? Uh, yeah, and he, he spent 40 years knowing it. And what did it say? It, it's about the organization, that bit, is about the organization of the 12 tribes of, of Israel, how they are arranged, and presumably what land they to occupy, you know. Now, the interesting thing about the Copper Scrolls is this. They had to cut them apart to read them. They had to cut. They couldn't unwrap them, so yeah. they they cut them in little two-inch strips around and then laid them. Are they written on just one side? They're on one side. Yeah. But the thing is, when you look at them, all along the top and all along the bottom are signs of holes, and there's tear marks, right? A hole with a rip mark. So they were Clearly, fixed to a wall or something. They've been nailed to a wall, and someone's ripped them off. Well, if you think about it, Solomon put golden shields plates up on the walls of the temple. In Jerusalem? Yeah. These were stolen by Shishak, Pharaoh, right? And his son Rehoboam didn't have enough money, Solomon's son, so he put copper ones up. No. To replace them? Yeah. Now the temple was later ransacked by, uh, certainly by Nebuchadnezzar and whatever. It looks to me, it's a guess, right? as if some pious person has ripped them off the wall, rolled them up, put them in a jar, and that's them. And hidden them in a cave? And in Qumran, was in it? In Qumran. But it is the same alphabet. There's no doubt at all, and it can be deciphered. And then we found that uh, a Croatian uh, explorer had gone to Egypt, and he'd found a mummy. And this mummy was wrapped in a 32, outside, a 32-foot-long, big, broad piece of cloth, you see? And it's plastered from one end to the other end. The same alphabet. In Welsh? Yeah. Well, it's common <laughs> alphabet, so I'm assuming. <laughs> in a Welsh mummy. So, no, there, this is in Zagreb. I, I tell you what, uh, it's right now I wish I was Welsh. Yeah. Well, no, well, you probably are. I mean, you've got, everyone's got a bit of everything. My father from uh, the northeast of England, my mother's from Cardiff, and, and her antecedents are from Anglesey and West Wales, and, you know. Well, you were born in Cardiff, weren't you? I was born in Cardiff, yeah, unlucky. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. <laughs> Anyway, the point is, where were we? Uh, the, 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 the Zagreb mummy, Shroud. The mummy so shroud. get rid of the Zagreb Shroud. You couldn't get it because they're behind the Iron Curtain. We've been at this a long time. Okay. Well, and it was part of Yugoslavia. And I, finally, there's a, a lady, a very distinguished lady in television, Diane Sawyer, in America. She got us copies of the Zagreb Shroud. So we, so we managed to amass this stuff. And we decided that... It was best to sort of work our way back with Sorry. There are stones in Scotland, Wales, and England which have this alphabet on them. Okay. So we'd worked on them. They read out. You know, we'll go and read the ones in Italy now. And so on. I remember writing to a Glyn Daniels, a professor, I think, at Oxford or Cambridge. And I said about the, the inscriptions in Valcamonica on a stone. He wrote back and said, There are no inscriptions on any stones in Valcamonica. So I sent him a photograph. <laughs> I wish this correspondence to be discontinued. <laughs> you know, well, he just didn't want to know. Didn't want to know. Is it because also that you know they're a bit snobby about academics that they'll talk to, and, I, and I you didn't have all the right kind yeah, of antecedents? Yeah, no, I, th I, I, I got some sympathy. I talked at length with a professor in Swansea, who was a classics professor. He said, "No, oh, I've got to keep my wife and family. I need a job." <laughs>